What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, um, we had a mission with the F-150. So this is the type of video we're going to be kind of sitting down and showing you guys all the events I recorded in the last two to three days because there's a lot of things I recorded. And I was like, instead of putting audio in it, let's go ahead and have a sit down and have it more professional if you guys know what I mean. So first things first, obviously we took out the truck on its first test drive after replacing the new rear axle and everything with Blake. Again, huge special shout out to Blake's from Blake's Garage for helping us put the whole rear end back on the truck. I honestly did not know how to do a job like that and it would have cost us so much more money. Now I actually know how to do it. It's not as scary to do, uh, but without Blake, that honestly wouldn't have been possible. So huge shout out to him. We headed over to Costco uh, just to fill up the truck with some premium gas. And um, uh, some people are saying you don't really need premium gas. Some people are saying you do. It is a six, It is a 3.5. EcoBoost six cylinder. So let me know down below guys, should I put premium or regular? I'm assuming because it's a truck, still needs premium, but because it's not a BMW, I'm not sure, let me know. Please stop, oh my God. Once we've gotten gas, we hit the highway and I was super, super, super stressed out. I was like hoping everything is exactly where it needs to be, all the suspension components. I mean, I triple checked everything before we headed out, but still it was a little bit nerve wracking because we took the whole rear end off of the car and put it all back together with the drive shaft and everything. So it was a first time for everything, but thankfully everything was perfect or so I thought until we saw a Christmas light of trees, the, the, the F-150 started to look like a BMW. It had the brake light, a bunch of other lights that has to do with the brakes that popped up on the dash and I was like oh my god did I not like tighten up the caliper right or something to do I was like starting to second guess my work again um, and so we went ahead and just pulled up to a Le Schwab the closest one is about five minutes uh, because it was sending a bunch of errors in terms of the brakes and I didn't want to like you know die obviously so um, I mean the brakes and everything were working just fine there was no issues with the car whatsoever it was just all those lights popped up so we stopped by Le Schwab and uh, they diagnosed the car for us and they said literally there's no issues whatsoever. Seems like since you replaced the whole rear end, it could be a sensor freaking out. Uh, Fords typically have problems with their sensors and stuff. So could be a sensor just freaking out, but we checked all your suspension. We checked your brakes and everything, uh, your fluids and everything seems to be good. And huge shout out to Le Schwab for doing that absolutely for free. Our mission from here was to just get to L&D Solutions. So we finally made it to L&D Solutions and it hooked up their computer. The reason we had to get to L&D Solutions is because we needed that airbag light to get figured out. I don't Know why the airbag light was still there. Um, we cleared the lights, it came back after like a short bit, and I don't understand why it came back. We replaced all the airbags, we reset the module. So I took it down to him, and all he had to do is I guess program something, and everything was good to go, including even the sensors in the rear differential. Once he actually programmed those sensors, uh, all the lights went away, and uh, all the brake stuff, and no more errors, and we drove it perfectly fine. I even put it by four by four, and everything was good to go. So it looked like some kind of programming thing. I'm unfamiliar with Ford, so it looks like Ford is starting to do their own programming stuff nowadays. So now they're all ready to go. We figured we have no lights. Let's go ahead and do more of the inspections. So we headed over to Brake Light and Smog. There's this place um, in North Highlands, I believe. And uh, we went over there to just get the Brake Light and Smog done. So the light we passed with no issues whatsoever and I was super happy. In terms of brake, it was a little, little um, upsetting. So basically he looked at it, he was diagnosing it. He's like, we saw, I see a lot of brake fluids here. It looks like you're leaking a significant amount of brake fluids. When you press on the, the brake pedal, um, it, it doesn't seem like it, it's, it's the right pressure and whatnot. And I did bleed the brakes earlier that day and I dumped a bunch of brake fluids where, you know, where the actual, where you fill up the brake fluid. Um, and it was literally all dripping from there. And then uh, he said, you're leaking, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to pass you. So then we took the truck and then we came back and I was like, I, cause I took it to the shop again and I was like, can you guys diagnose this? You guys said there's nothing wrong. And they said there's nothing wrong. So I went back to him and I was like, this is just because of my spill. Like I spilled the fluids. Um, can you guys just retest and just check that out? Um, so they retested it and he kept up pressing on the brake. I told him, go look, I'll keep pressing on the brake and see if there's anything leaking. If something's leaking, I'll be more than happy to take it home and get it fixed. Thankfully, he saw, he saw no new like leaks or anything like that. It looks like just a, from a previous leak. So as soon as we got home, we actually uh, just brake, brake clean that all off, but uh, he passed us for brake, thankfully. It was a little stressful there, uh, but the next part uh, we failed again was smog. We actually failed smog, and I was like, how do we fail smog? He has no lights on the dash. Uh, it turns out we have an oil catch can. So the previous owner installed an oil catch can to prevent any uh, you know, engine damage, uh, because you know, guys know the turbo cars need oil catch cans. I knew there was an oil catch can, but I was like, maybe that oil catch can came with the truck when you first buy it. I have no idea, but he's like, no, that's clearly an aftermarket park, and we need the original uh, PCV hose to pass braking light. So anyhow, uh, we didn't have smog done, but we got home, we went ahead and slept on it, woke up the next day, and we pretty much went back on the mission for getting the F-150 on the road. So first things first, we went ahead and just emptied out the entire trunk of the truck. We had so many things in the truck, and we actually need to empty all that out because we have to weigh the truck. Apparently, with salvage trucks, you have to weigh 
weigh it. For what reason, I have no idea. But the more it weighs, the more you pay. So I was like, I have a couple wheels back there, a couple suspension components. I'm not gonna be paying for that stuff. So we came home, dropped it all off in the backyard, headed back on our journey. And we figured while we're home and we're heading in that direction, um, might as well take the 7 Series. So our solenoids uh, finally came in for the 7 Series. Uh, all the solenoids for the Megatronics and our sensor for the Megatronics. We're pretty much rebuilding the transmission completely at this point. And uh, I had to spend money out of pocket for that stuff. Spent about like $400 on that extra stuff. So uh, Showman from Showman Motors is working on it. Again, huge shout out to them. They do pretty much anything and everything in terms of maintenance in the NorCal area. So they are the shop to go to. My recommendations, if you're in NorCal, if you guys are SoCal, make sure to go to SSR over there. Those are my two favorite shops from these two different locations. So if I have issues over here, I'm going to Showman. If I have issues in SoCal, I'll be heading to SSR. <laughs> They're just two amazing shops owned by two amazing people. Benny, a huge special shout out to Showman. He is taking care of the 740 as we speak. Finally arrived here at Showman Motors, so I uh, cannot wait to just drop off the 7 Series and hopefully, hopefully, get this transmission fixed. It's about time, guys. And then we just took our truck and we're back on the mission. So then we went to go get the truck weighed. It was a completely different experience. I've never actually had to take a truck or anything to get weighed before, like an actual car to get weighed. I mean, I weighed myself a couple times and I was rethinking my weight, but not not a, not a car. So once we actually got that weighed, we, we got a document for it. I was like, oh wow, this is official. Like this is legit, like people actually do this. So we got the document, we're good to go. So now we have break, we have light, and we have the weight certificate. We need smog again. So I decided to give smog a couple more goes at a couple other places and maybe, uh, you know, they just won't notice it because I was like, please, just I really want this to pass. It's not a big deal even. It's not like I have any engine modifications. It's just an oil catch can, catches oil. Like, it's not a big deal. So I went to another place and uh, they said, no, absolutely not. That, that is actually a uh, part of the PCV system. We cannot pass you. I was like, okay. Went to another place and they said, no, we cannot pass you, but we do have a part in stock that you can just direct replace it. And if you want to pay for the part, we can install it and then, you know, we can pass you. And I was like, oh, okay, well, um, if you have the part, I mean, I kind of want to just get this thing registered. Yeah, let's go ahead and pay for the part. So I paid for the part. They went ahead and threw it on. We passed smocks. So thankfully, after the headaches and everything, it wouldn't pass, but eventually it passed. Thank the Lord. And it was over something so stupid, like an aftermarket cash can. It wasn't because the car, the car is 100% healthy. It was just because of that. And anywho, we are graving the Navy. Once we got all of our papers, I wanted to pretty much work on some details, like the windshield wipers. They were in terrible shape. Like literally when they're flapping everywhere on the highway, I was like, oh man, we need some new windshield wipers. We got some new windshield fluids. Once we put the fluids in there, we got the wipers on there, and I was like one happy man. Ready to test our windshield wipers. Ugh. Feels like we're starting up the engine for the first time. Gotta see if it's working. Oh, there you go. But anyway, now we are home. We're working on getting the temporary plates for the truck. Once we get the temporary plates, we'll be having them for like three or four months, uh, which makes the car perfectly legal to drive. And then we're just gonna be waiting to do VIN verification because uh, it is a salvage thing. So you guys know uh, with salvage cars, you need brake, light, uh, for a truck, you need the weight and then smog and then VIN verification. So a lot of inspections you gotta do here in California, but thankfully we passed four. We just need to do that one and we're good to go. Also, for those of you guys who are wondering about the M4, I was following up on the auction. A lot of you guys sent me the link for it. I followed up on it and it went for a slightly over $20,000. And uh, I mean, considering how the condition of the car is right now, it just needs a quarter panel. Uh, $20,000 is a very, very, very good deal, but not for me. I don't really wanna buy a car to replace the quarter panel. We're good to go at $20,000. I want to get more of a build and I want to get another M build on the channel. I feel like we pretty much saved that thing. Whoever that's going to be buying it next is going to pretty much just have barely any work to do. And it runs and drives perfectly good to go. The next owner is getting a mint, mint, mint car. We did the crank hub and anything. I'm hoping one of you guys got that M4. If one of you guys got that M4, I actually have the spare key. So hit me up, show me pictures, and uh, we'll talk about that. But I'm really hoping that's going to get saved again. So I'm really hoping the M4 went to somebody that's going to be saving it, not parting it out because it, it doesn't deserve to be parted out. It literally just needs a quarter panel replacement we're good to go. But as for me, we are looking for another M build on the channel and uh, we, we've been looking guys. I've been bidding on so many, but the people are just overpaying. There was one with 181,000 miles M car with a perfect dream spec interior um, and uh, they, they overpaid by five grand. So we're working on it right now. I don't know, I guess people getting all these checks from the government and they're just overspending. So I'm not gonna be overpaying for a car. Anywho, we're not gonna get into all that. We didn't get the M4 unfortunately, but I'm sure it's gonna get in the right hands and I hope one of you guys actually won the auction. Make sure to hit me up. But we are looking for an M car. But without further ado, guys, that pretty much concludes this video. I'm gonna be heading out today again to head out to a couple co parts to look at some M cars. And hopefully, we'll be getting an M car soon on the channel. And hopefully, the 7 Series is getting fixed by Showman Motors. Without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.